Welcome to my series about Cheat Engine. In this video, I'll try to explain multi level pointers. Multi level pointers are just pointers that will need multiple steps to get to the final destination. This example, how to get from game.exe to OTC to the player statistics like health. So, first we have this base pointer, which points to the map. And the map contains at offset 8 a pointer to the player. And the player contains at offset 10 or 16 in decimal pointer to the player stats. So written down, it will look like this with game plus 202c plus offset 8 plus offset 10 equals player stats. Now that you have seen how pointers are used inside the game, let's continue with the tutorial step 8, multi-level pointers. Object here is to find the working pointer path to the value and then freeze it to 5000. So, first we need to find the value. That's it. Generate a pointer map. Let's see. Tutorial step 8. Okay, let's close the tutorial. Let's call the password first. That makes it easier for us. Let's find the value to Seven. Right, I need to process so this one. Remove this one. We we'll just sure. now do our pointer scan for this address. Compare the results with saved pointer map. Got it. Total step eight. Select the address that was this one. And if the default options seem to be correct, usually in a real game this should be 8 or 9, but the tutorial is just a small game, so 5 will do fine here. So let's scan. That 1. Have it, 183 results. Now, of course, not all of these are correct. Pointer. As you can see, a lot of these are not correct anymore, but this one is. Now, we have this address, base address, and these four offsets. So, let's change it to 5000, change pointer. Oh, I've got a free set. Stupid me. So, come on. 5000, reset, change pointer. And there you have it. I have found the pointer to the value. Now I know people will usually tell you to do the manual method, which might be better, but honestly, if the pointer scanner works, I really recommend using the pointer scanner. But I can show you the manual method as well. So let's first find the value of the address. Well, it's one but there we go so they tell you to use the debug option find out accesses value there we have it let's open my notepad so the first offset is 18 So that means we need to scan for this address, minus 18. This is also hexadecimal, so let's scan it like this. And then we'll get this address, accesses. And we get an offset of zero. So this address, minus zero. This one, then we'll find 
this is that. Something with an offset 18. Actually, no. 18. So, and for that, 1, 8. Get this one. Let's find out what axis is this. And assign it to 10. Okay, good to know. 10. Copy this. And for the address, minus 10. And we have a green address here. Green means it's a static address, so we can basically stop at this point. And by double clicking it, we get it in the module name, this offset notation, which is what makes it static. So never ever just copy the address like this, but double click to get the address like this. And as you can see, this is basically the same address that we found earlier. Then 18018. The pointer scanner found the exact pointer that we just found as well. So in the end, it was just a waste of time to use the debugger to find this. Do keep in mind that there can be multiple paths to the same destination. For example, the game might have a pointer to the player directly instead of going through the map first. Same goes for the menu system. The menu may have a direct point to the player to be able to display the current health. And even mobs, they might have a pointer to the player they are attacking. So if you were to go from the game to the map to the mobs, you could also go to the player and then the player statistics. So keep that in mind when scanning for pointers. There is not just one pointer like in the tutorial. Also, while I did mention that debugging is not effective for pointer scanning, it can be a helpful tool to increase the speed of the scan itself. By providing it the final offsets, you can limit the amount of parts it has to evaluate for the pointers, thus decreasing the time it needs to scan. Anyhow, I hope this tutorial has been informative for you, and I will see you next time.